Oh, finally, a moment alone. The cell is busy scouting the road ahead while we set up camp. But uh, considering we have no tents, nothing worth being stolen, and only two bedrolls, I think camp is about set up. So, uh, a night under the stars it is. <laughs> I know the situation is different now, but uh, we can pretend we are back in the Crimson Sands. Another night under the stars, sleeping by firelight, you borrowing my cloak and falling asleep on my shoulder. I do not think I mind reminiscing. We have uh, hours before Cicel is back, and uh, I think we are due some time to ourselves. And all this time on the ship, and then the road, and then visiting mystics and taverns, and hearing about potentially dying has left me wanting some uh, personal time. With my treasured one. Oh, and there was something I wanted to show you. I know you said you wanted to teach me. But uh, you also know that uh, Jackal likes to take initiative. In every way. <laughs> Watch. Gilvanok, Glen, Shedarin. <laughs> Jackal thinks he is getting the hand of this magic. I had a look through your books when we were on the boat. I think your uh, evocation magic does not suit Jackal well. But, uh, abjection? Well, ugh, do not tease Jackal for not being able to say abjection. I do not have to be able to say it to be good at it. <laughs> I am... Uh, now you call it... An... Abjection Magnus. <laughs> yes, the word is roughly translated, but... In my sometimes limited common... One who uses spell and blade is called a Magnus. Actually, that makes Jackal think. Yes, I know. Jackal thinking is dangerous, but uh, you have not heard Jackal speak uh, Baladan before. It is what all in the sand speak. It is just most choose to speak common. Because, uh, Greenlanders have most of the coin. <laughs> and it is only through speaking common that one can separate a Greenlander from their precious gold. If we had met and Jackal had said, Shinalta Greenlander Venoklos Ven, I have a feeling that even one as, uh, intelligent as you, Mitch, might have been a touch confused. Baladan might be spoken in the sands, but it is spoken near nowhere else. <laughs> you want Jackal to teach you? Oh, that is right. You are always so eager to learn. <laughs> and so the uh, student becomes the master. <laughs> Very well. But I must warn you, mage, Baladan is uh, infamously difficult and indisputably the oldest language in the known world. But uh, that is enough of Jackal's pride in his heritage. <laughs> Although Jackal will say, you Greenlanders have far too few words for far too many things.
Well, yes, I know that is not how languages work. But if you are ready, Jackal says that we should start our first lesson now. There is uh, something about learning a language under the stars. The uh, first thing you should know is that, uh, unlike in common, the word I changes depending on, uh, what is it, uh, context. The way you reference yourself changes depending on the intention of the conversation. We have uh, four best intentions. Want, need, desire, and request. Each with its own uh, quirks, depending on the importance of the conversation, who you are speaking to, and uh, how you see yourself in regards to the other person. And it, it's not one set thing throughout beginning to end. The way you refer to yourself can change depending on how the conversation evolves. Want is uh, shall null. Uh, that is uh, referring to yourself in the term of want. You will probably use this one the most. It is the uh, simple, the, uh, the go-to. You meet someone for the first time, uh, shall null. It implies that you want to talk to them, but uh, you can take it or leave it. It is uh, like saying that their importance is uh, equal to yours in the conversation. Need is uh, Brenak. This one is a little more flexible. You use Brenak to impart urgency in your requirement or to imply that your interest in the conversation trumps theirs. Like um, talking to servants or nobles, talking to merchants or if you are in a situation that is important. Um, like if you desperately needed a cabbage. Brenak. <laughs> Just uh, don't use it too much. It can sound condescending if you use it too much. More that you uh, have a lot of self-importance. Balloon is uh, formal. It is request. You do not use it often, but uh, when you do use it, it is to uh, address someone who is your superior. You never need to use this one much, and uh, between you and Jackal, Jackal has managed to go most of his life without using it. <laughs> Balloon implies the person you are speaking to is above you. You request the honor of talking to them in the way you refer to yourself. Cicel would be used to having people refer to themselves as Belong, proving yet another reason why we hope something on the road eats him. <laughs> you said I could not poison him. There is nothing you said about not wishing him ill, and hoping that the Unseen One, or the Crimson Mother, or the Ancients, or whatever entity lives in the clouds does my job for me. <laughs> but, uh, you distract me, Mage. I thought we were in the middle of a lesson. The uh, last one. Um, Fenal is desire. This one is used in a more personal context. Usually with the ones that you love. Mother, father, um, lover. The final in that is uh, constant. You never stop loving someone, so the word never changes, no matter what. In the sense, life is short and 
love should be constant, so it reflects in our very language. No, you want an example? Is it for educational purposes or because you want to hear me say Fenal when talking to you? Well, Jackal can arrange that. Dalva Fenal Jeshnak Praneshao. A simple sentence to start off with. With you, I am happy. <laughs> you see, the I in the sentence shows the relationship, yes? <laughs> eh, before you know it, you will be better at Paladin than I am. <laughs> Let me tell you this, though. If Jackal ever uses Brenak in conversation with you, you have every right to to throw hands. <laughs> but uh, I prefer not to use uh, Fennel. It is uh, difficult. I uh, have not used it uh, much before. But, uh, if you do not mind, I feel comfortable telling you the story. And, uh, I know you have some questions. And they are questions I cannot answer. But, I hope that uh, what I say might give answers. When uh, Jackal was young, b before Jackal was Jackal, he used to live like the rest of the urchins in Asherport. Times were hard, but simple. And all that mattered was going from one day to the next. And it was a struggle, but looking back, uh, the simple can be good, even if the simple was not enjoyable. There was this woman, a tiefling, Lady something. Uh, she lived in the port. In this small manner, but to us it was Nepalis. A beautiful place ripped right from another world. The tales told that she was fabulously wealthy and that when her son died she needed something to fill the hole in her heart. So she filled her heart with charity. And this woman, the, the, the tiefling, she used to come to where the urchins would sleep, not send servants, but go herself. And she would hand out to each of us the most amazing things. Candied apples, um, flavored ice, uh, even the most beautiful sweets. Those that only the wealthiest of merchants could afford to stock. Even now, Vion and Lozo don't have anything close. But uh, she never made us call her by her title. Only to go 
mother. Mother. All of the children. We thought it was because she missed her child, but we did not really care. It was food. Good food and and uh, kindness. Eventually, if she liked one of us enough, she would ask them to become her new child. She would uh, adopt them. And we were happy. We were happy for them. Those chosen would tell us that they would go to the continent now, go to a real school and learn and visit mother on holidays and come to see all of us. And this happened time and time again. And all any of us wanted was to become one of mother's children. But there were so many of us that I wanted it. I wanted it so badly. More than anything. Then, um, after she had been coming by for years now, I couldn't take it anymore. I broke into her house. I had never been chosen and I just wanted to see her ask her why I wasn't good enough to be her child. And And I saw her. She was talking to a captain from the dock. She had been selling the children to mines on the continent. You see, you cannot sell what you do not own. Adopting a child makes them yours. That was why she only took the strongest of the children. That was how she paid for her home. How she paid for the gifts. It was... It was with them. I was just a child. I couldn't stop her. So I did the only thing I could. I waited until the night came and I set fire to her manor with her inside. I never told the other children. They deserve to believe that someone, anyone cared about them. And after that, it wasn't long before I picked up a blade. It wasn't long until I became Jackal. Not the strongest or the fastest or the most cunning, but the one who could shoulder the burdens no one else could because no one else could be trusted with them I have always done the only thing I could (sighs) no, no Jackal is fine 
I know you wonder why I am here, my sweet mage. Jackal is here for choice. Because in the end, I chose to keep you safe. And keeping you safe is something I could never trust to anyone else. And I will keep you safe until my dying day. <laughs>